We've all heard tales about the illustrious presidents of the United States, their grand accomplishments, their trials, and tribulations. But beyond the history books and the headlines, there are facts about these leaders that often slip through the cracks of common knowledge. For instance, Grover Cleveland, the only man to serve non-consecutive terms as president, or Benjamin Harrison, who shattered conventions by appointing the first-ever female White House staffer. Or perhaps you've wondered about the quieter side of Calvin Coolidge, a man of few words, who once won a wager with a single sentence. And let's not forget about FDR, a president related to an astonishing number of other former presidents. These are just a glimpse into the mysteries and curiosities of the Oval Office. But the most surprising fact of all, the one that will make you rethink everything you thought you knew about US presidents. Well, brace yourself, because we're about to dive right in. What's up my amazing and curious folks? I'm Caesar, your guide on this journey of fascination and wonder. Are you ready to unravel some mysteries together? With me here is the insightful and vivacious Sonia Guimaraes, my partner on this quest for knowledge. Hey everyone! Super excited to dive into today's topic with you all. Remember folks, don't just listen, join our community. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you don't miss out on our daily episodes. This is the Curiosity Wonderland. Let's jump right into today's intriguing subject, shall we? Now, here's something intriguing. Think about the US presidents, the ones we've learned about in school. You've got the likes of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin D. Roosevelt. These are names that resonate in the corridors of American history. But what about the others? The ones that aren't usually in the spotlight? Like William McKinley, Calvin Coolidge, Grover Cleveland, James K. Polk? I feel like we don't hear about them as much. Exactly. And that's what we're about to dive into. A series of forgotten facts about these unsung heroes of American presidency. And I promise you, these tidbits will make you look at American history in a completely new light. I'm all ears. Let's start unraveling these mysteries. Let's kick things off with Grover Cleveland, a name that sounds familiar but often gets lost in the annals of history. He was the country's 22nd president, serving from 1885 through 1889. Now, here's a twist. He won the term after defeating James G. Blaine in 1884. But then, he lost the next election in 1888 to Benjamin Harrison, despite winning the popular vote. Wait, so he won, but he lost? That's quite a twist. Yes, it's a bit of a political roller coaster. The Electoral College didn't swing his way, and he had to step aside. But as they say, resilience is key. He was nominated again in 1892 to challenge Harrison. And guess what? He not only won the popular vote this time around, but also secured the needed Electoral College votes. So he was president, then he wasn't, and then he was president again? That's quite a comeback story. Exactly. He made a remarkable comeback, becoming the nation's 24th president after his second win. Now, isn't that an intriguing piece of forgotten history? Absolutely. It really makes you rethink what you thought you knew about American history. Now, while we're on the subject of Grover Cleveland and his unique political career, here's something really interesting. Cleveland remains the only person in history to serve non-consecutive terms as president of the United States. No one else has done it before or since. That's incredible. But there's got to be more to this story. What happened in between Cleveland's terms? Well, that's where Benjamin Harrison comes into the picture. He occupied the presidency between Cleveland's two terms. And he made his own mark in history by doing something no president had ever done before, he hired a woman. Seriously? That's quite progressive, for the time. Do we know anything more about her? Absolutely. On January 2, 1890, Alice Sanger became the first-ever female White House staffer in American history. Her appointment was a major step in the fight for equal treatment. I can imagine what a groundbreaking moment that must have been. It's like, you're not just working in an office, you're working in the White House. Can you give me an example of why this was so important? Sure. Just think about the context at the time. Women were fighting for their rights, struggling for things like property rights, educational opportunities, better employment options, fair divorce, and child custody laws. 
So, Sanger's appointment was not just about one job, it was about opening doors and breaking barriers. And I guess it also signaled a changing of the guard in Washington? Precisely. It was a clear sign that things were starting to move in the right direction. Even though American women wouldn't get the right to vote until 1920, three decades after Sanger's appointment, the wheels were very much in motion. That's truly fascinating. Can't wait to hear more of these lesser-known stories. What's next on the list? The next story is about William McKinley. He was elected president in 1897, re-elected for a second term, but only six months into his second term, he was assassinated. That's tragic. These stories really do remind us that history is full of unexpected turns and twists. Seeing the face of a president on a bill is common, but do we ever ponder the behind-the-scenes story of how it came to be? Here's an interesting one. After William McKinley's tragic death, he was commemorated by having his likeness put on the $500 bill. Well, that's quite an honor. But I don't think I've ever seen a $500 bill. Yes, you're right. These notes, known as Green Seal Notes, were discontinued in 1969 due to a lack of need. But who knows, with the way the financial world is developing, we might see McKinley's face make a return to the economy. That would be fascinating. Can you give an example of how the financial world is developing and might cause a return of larger denomination bills? Well, think about inflation, the decreasing value of money over time. As the value of money decreases, the relative value of larger denominations may increase. In countries experiencing hyperinflation, even million and billion dollar bills have been printed. While that's not likely in the US, it's an example of how financial changes can impact currency denominations. That's a really good point. What's next on the list? Next up is a fun fact about a century-old tradition involving American presidents and baseball. Do you know who started the tradition of the president throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game? I don't actually. Who was it? That would be William Howard Taft. He was a big baseball fan and saw the potential in the rapidly growing sport. On April 14, 1910, he threw out the first pitch at a game between the Washington Senators and the Philadelphia Athletics. And thus, a tradition was born. Moving on, let's talk about Calvin Coolidge, the perfect example of the saying, actions speak louder than words. His time in office might not be well remembered due to his quiet demeanor. He became president quite unexpectedly after Harding's sudden death in 1923. Coolidge then won a term on his own in the fall of 1924. A quiet president, huh? You have my attention. Do tell more. Well, he was so silent that there's a legend about a woman who visited the White House and vouched that she could get at least three words out of the silent president. Coolidge, quick as a whip, replied, you lose. Haha, <laughs> that's a great response. A man of few words indeed. What's next? Next up, we have Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who served for three terms, from 1933 to 1945. These were tumultuous times for the United States, with the worst years of the Great Depression and the battles of World War II. But there might have been something in his DNA that allowed him to lead the nation through these challenging times. In his DNA? Now that's a teaser. I can't wait to hear more about it. To elaborate more on Franklin Delano Roosevelt's DNA, genealogists have linked him to at least 11 other former presidents. 11 presidents. That's an impressive lineage. Who were these presidents? Well, Theodore Roosevelt was FDR's fifth cousin, so there was a direct link. But historians have also linked him to George Washington, John Adams, James Madison, John Quincy Adams, William Henry Harrison, Zachary Taylor, Ulysses S. Grant, Benjamin Harrison, and William Taft. He also has a more distant relation to Martin Van Buren. That's a lot of presidents. Any non-presidential connections? Interestingly, yes. Some genealogists and historians have speculated that FDR has familial links to Winston Churchill and Robert E. Lee. Wow. That's quite a family tree. What's next? Next, we have Harry S. Truman. Did you know his middle name doesn't stand for anything? Really? That's unusual. Why is that? It was a family compromise to honor his two grandfathers, Anderson Ship Truman and Solomon Young, without choosing one name over the other. Thus, the S stands alone. That's a neat way to honor family tradition. Are there any other presidents with similar middle name situations? 
Indeed, there is one more. Ulysses S. Grant was born Hiram Ulysses Grant. However, when he was nominated to the Military Academy at West Point, a congressman mistakenly changed his name and gave him the middle initial. Quite a story, isn't it Sonia? Certainly is, Caesar. I'm learning so much today. What's next? Grant didn't mind the mix-up with his name. His critics even called him Unconditional Surrender Grant while his backers referred to him as Uncle Sam Grant. Talk about making the best out of a mix-up. Exactly. Now, moving on to Lyndon Baines Johnson. He was known for his folksy demeanor which won him a second term despite the social upheaval and the Vietnam War. I'm guessing he had quite a character to win people over in such tough times. He certainly did. And you know what? Before his political career, Johnson was a teacher. Really? That's a far cry from politics. Yes, but he credited those four years of teaching for helping him prioritize education policy when he was in the White House. That's fascinating. A teacher turned president. And what about Nixon? Ah, Richard Nixon. Well, he's remembered for the infamous end to his presidency in 1974. But there are some interesting aspects to his journey into political office as well. Infamous end? That sounds intriguing. Do elaborate. Nixon, besides being remembered for his presidency's infamous end, was also known for his prowess at poker during his service in World War II. He was stationed in the Solomon Islands and became notorious as a skilled poker player. A president who was good at poker. Now that's a combination. Indeed. He was so successful, in fact, that he used his poker winnings to fund his first local political campaigns. That's one way to fund a campaign. Now, let's shift gears to Gerald Ford. Before becoming the 38th president, Ford made his mark on the football field. Football and politics, now that's a blend. Yes, Ford was a star player at the University of Michigan. He helped the team win two Big Ten conference titles and national championships with two undefeated seasons in both 1932 and 33. And on top of his athletic prowess, Ford proved his commitment to equality and fairness. How so? When his teammate Willis Ward, who was black, was barred from playing against Georgia Tech, Ford refused to play in solidarity. He only agreed to suit up when Ward himself insisted. That shows character, standing up for a teammate like that. Absolutely. From teaching to poker and football to standing up for equality, the lives of these presidents before their time in office were as diverse and fascinating as the men themselves. So, there you have it, folks. From Grover Cleveland's non-consecutive terms to Benjamin Harrison's pioneering appointment of a female White House staffer to Richard Nixon's poker-fueled political campaign and Gerald Ford's football glory and stand against racism, we've unraveled some lesser-known tidbits about former U.S. presidents. These forgotten facts tell us that the lives of these presidents were as diverse and fascinating beyond the Oval Office as they were in it. Absolutely, and it just goes to show that the people who shape the course of history have their own unique stories and paths that led them there. It's been a fascinating journey uncovering these hidden gems. Remember, history is not always about the big events. Sometimes, the most fascinating details are the ones hiding in plain sight. So true. And on that note, we've come to the end of today's episode of Curiosity Wonderland. If you've enjoyed unraveling these presidential mysteries with us, don't forget to blast that like button, leave a comment, and share this episode with your friends. Yes, let's keep the curiosity alive and keep sharing these wonderful stories. We appreciate your company and look forward to our next exploration together. Until then, stay curious. Caesar Chagas and Sonia, goodbye. We found this intriguing information from an article titled 10 Forgotten Facts About U.S. Presidents written by Selmy Angulo, published on Listverse on September 25, 2023. You can find the full URL in the video description if you want to delve deeper into the subject. Now, it's time for us to bid you farewell.